Whoa, hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. And once again, we'd like to welcome you to Saffron Caps Voice Over Talk Show. Wow, it's boiling. I hope we've all got our water beside us because you are going to need to be taking sips. Um, please stay safe out there. If you do need to get up to go and take a, take a break, feel free to do so. It's amazing to have you all on board today. Um, uh, my name is Gizo Giacco. And I am the director for programs for Saffron SACAP. Um, with me today, I have my two fellow directors. I will ask uh, you, Dee, first, if you'd like to unmute and introduce yourself. Good evening, everyone. And thank you again for joining us on another voiceover talk show. Uh, we do have something very uh, interesting and very important to share with you tonight. My name is Deborah, and I am the director for Safeguarding Children in School. So stay tuned. Thank you, Deborah. And alongside Deborah, we also have, um, I call her my boss. Would you like to unmute and introduce yourself, please? Uh, hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Um, oh, good evening. Good afternoon somewhere. Um, and actually, good morning somewhere else in the world. It's amazing that this heat wave has just um, has just dawned on us. It just it just landed on all of us. Um, I don't know how you're coping, but um, please stay hydrated. Um, try to stay cool, and um, just hang on in there. You know what England is like. The weather could be snowing next week. Um, Anyways, it is great to have you all here with us. Thank you for allowing us to um, share your space this evening. Um, as usual, I will be your host on Facebook. I believe Dee might be um, on with you also at some point in time today. But please, um, this is very important uh, topic that we're addressing today. Please share, ask um, people to come on and join in the discussion. This concerns each and every one of us in one way or another. So um, I want to say welcome to everyone who's joined us today and um, hope um, we all have a very informative session. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Yemi. Um, yes, so I'm before I will be handing over to Debbie who's going to anchor for us tonight, you know, um, today's show is basically um, a follow on from um, what I call a backlash, which we all um, were privy to after the um, England and Italy match. And, you know, we're not going to focus on the match as such, because obviously we are one, we're not sports analysts, so we wouldn't understand how they missed or didn't miss. Um, but we're really going to focus on, you know, post the match. And um, I would like to say that our boys did amazingly amazingly made us very very proud um we're proud of them proud of all the team's efforts a football team is not made up of just three people it's made up of 11 plus the extras so we were proud of everybody plus the coach gareth southgate i think he did a, an amazing job um but unfortunately um the events that took place after um, the match and the week after and still going on you know um actually is what we're going to focus on today um, and what we're looking at really is the correlation between racism and mental health and the impact on the teens and young adults. Um, and the reason being um, is because it was sports, it was football. And we know how excited the whole country was. And, you know, I was seeing three and four year olds, you know, ecstatic on the streets. It was, it was such a lovely, it was an, the ambience was amazing. So to see us go from 100 to minus 10 in you know, a space of how many hours was quite sad. Um, but what we as an organization are focusing on is how the, the racial attacks, the innuendos, the direct attacks, um, the underlying currents, you know, how that, the, that, the, 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 the correlation between that and the mental health of our young people um, and of our teenagers and young adults. And you know, as we always say in Saffron, we don't know everything um, and we don't like to, to, to just give you what, we, what I call um, 
sensationalized information. You know, we like to go to the core and what we always do is to seek out our professionals. Um, and as you can see, we do have one with us at the moment. And Dee Deborah is going to um, unmute herself and take the baton um, because this is her field of speciality. This is her expertise. This is what she studies is studying. So you're listening to the voice of, I don't like that, the voice of reason. This is not the voice of reason. This is the voice of education. Somebody who has sat down, who has researched, who has done a lot of work, you know, around children and their mental health. So um, without much ado, um, and it is an, oh, it's going to be an open session. So there will be time for you to ask questions. Um, as you heard, Yemi will be anchoring the Facebook page. So please feel free to type your um, questions, statements on Facebook. If you come on the Zoom, you can also type it in the Zoom chat and we will pick them up and we will direct them towards Deborah who will answer the ones that you know she feels she can. Okay, so um, I want to also, um, just to recognize, we have in the building, um, Yemisi Jenkins, MBE. Good evening, Yemisi. Yemisi's always, always got saffron's, <laughs> always got saffron's back. It's amazing to have you on. I understand the heat is not allowing you to put your camera on and we totally understand that. We just want to say thank you so much for always having our back, for always supporting and following our cause. Um, and, and, and shouting us out there in the community. Um, yeah, me see. So thank you and I um, hope you enjoy this evening and I feel free to, um, to engage as the show goes on. Okay, Deb, so um, I'm gonna ask you to continue from here. Thank you so much, Deborah. Okay, thank you, Giz. And thank you once again, everyone who have been able to join us tonight. Thank you for being a part of the show. Um, and um, I think we'll just get right on with our discussion tonight. Um, our discussion tonight is um, as a result of the event that happened, I think it's about two weeks now. I think the game was two weeks now, yeah. Um, but um, we, we serve the African community. We are here to support the African community. And um, the incident of two weeks ago cannot go by without us saying something about it. And as Giz has said, we are not professional footballers and we're not athletes, even though I do have a young man here who is my son, who is a professional athlete, a footballer and um, what is it? 100 meters, 200 meters. So we will be talking to him in a little while to, you know, just kind of get his own um, experience and opinions on what it's like out there to be an athlete and have to deal with racism. Okay, without much ado, a lot of my information tonight has been as a result of some research, um, uh, psychiatry research. So I have a paper that has really caught my eye and caught my attention. And also I will be looking at some of the organizations that are available for young, um, for teens and young adults uh, within the United Kingdom. So we will, and once again, this is very interactive. So please um, join in and feel free to comment, feel free to ask questions, please contribute to this discussion. Um, I, I'm, we're here to all learn together. So um, I will start by talking about racism itself. Um, I'm going to read out a few things. And um, so basically, what is racism generally? So not necessarily um, racism against one person, but what, what, what does it mean? Um, so racism stems from the belief that it is reasonable to treat people differently because of their physical appearance. An oppressive system of race relations is set up whereby one group benefits from dominating another. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Is there a problem with the sound? Okay, okay, all right. So, all right, okay. So racism is not just discrimination, it is discrimination plus power. So race is, it's, um, racism has many forms and works at many levels. For instance, at an individual level, 
how people see themselves in the world may be affected by subtle racism in the education system, maybe. In the in interpersonal domain, racial abuse and harassment at work are they're commonplace. And in the wider social environment, much has been made of institutional racism in the provision of housing and other social benefits. To add to the complexity, at any of these levels, racism may be perceived or not perceived. It may be intentional or not intentional, and it may have acute or chronic impact. So I have, first of all, a record from way back in 2016, um, and this record is of the United Kingdom. So in the UK, as of 2000, I'm sorry, 2006, um, there were nearly 300,000 racist incidents uh, in a year, though only minority of crimes were reported, recorded actually aggravated um, crime was only 50,000 incidents. So 1% of the UK ethnic minority population experiences direct attack and about 14% experiences um, severe racial abuse each year. 65% of people from ethnic minority groups we do not call ourselves a, a minority, but according to the report, I'm just reading that. Um, believe that employers discriminate against them. Now, this is a paper that has been published, an article that has been published, and in it, it says in a national survey, over one third of white respondents said that they would actively discriminate against people of South Asian or Caribbean origin. So there is an admittance of this. People are not hiding it. It's not being hidden. People are saying it. If, if you can make your research anonymous and no names, no faces are showing, people will tell you exactly how they feel. So it is easier to measure discriminatory acts such as racist attacks, but it may be that everyday minor incidents or slight microaggressions and the perception the society is discriminatory may have a greater impact on the individual's health. And I'll just skip to another uh, uh, stats that I was able to get. This is between 2010 and 2020. And what we have is uh, just touching 80,000 um, number of racist incidents recorded by the police in England and Wales, 80, uh, touching 80,000. Okay, so before I continue, I just wanna kind of take a moment. I mean, if there's any questions at this point or any, such, any uh, opinions that someone wants to share, I'm happy to for us to kind of go through that, but if there isn't, then we can we can move right on. Yeah, yeah? I'd say we'd move right on. Yes. Should, should we continue? Uh, yes, please. Okay. All right. So, um, we, because sports has kind of triggered this discussion again, there's always something to trigger these discussions. And because this time it has been as a result of football, um, I have my son here. Like I said, he is a, a player, a football player. Um, but before we get to him, while I was doing some research, there is no year that footballers, Black, black footballers, uh, Black athletes, whether it's field or, or track, there is no year that there has not been some form of racial discussion because a fan has said something, a reporter has said something, the media has said something, trollers or whatever they call themselves online have said something. Um, these people get death uh, threats all the time. People think that because they get paid a lot, they should have to deal with that. And some people even think that they're doing them a favor that they can even, you know, they should be able to tolerate that kind of behavior. And that is what we need to work on to say that that kind of behavior is not acceptable. So um, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Ayumire and I am a football player. Okay, 
All right. So, um, Aimee, I just wanted to um, ask you, you know what the topic is tonight? And um, I just wanted to ask you um, what your experience of racism has been uh, through your years being in, uh, in, yeah, in football team. Let's do football. Okay. Um, well, one of the racist incidents that I can think of recently happened about a year ago. Okay. And this was maybe two years now. I believe I was about 17, turning 18 at the time. And the team I play for is a men's team. So adults around 25 upwards. I believe I was the youngest on the team at the time. Okay. So at that time, we were playing a team in Sittenbourne, I believe. I'm not sure if people know where that is. But it's all right. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> But yeah, normally we all know that football is a contact sport, so there will be aggressive moments in the match, and that is nothing that anyone will be uh, surprised about. But during this match, it was just a bit more than usual. It seemed that the players of the opposite team were kind of targeting certain players, and you could see this in the way they played. Even though the, a player like myself or one of the other black players on the team were not with the ball, we were still being tackled, which is an illegal move in football, which, which should be penalised. But if the referee does not see this happening, he cannot penalise the opposite team. So we had to continue playing. But for, as the match did continue, the attackers did get more aggressive. And as the ref was witness to these, he was penalising the other players. Um, however, the players on the opposite team believed that this could be unfair and started arguments with me and another player. Okay. Even though we tried to justify the okay. situation, they still wasn't um, being accepted of it. Okay. So what was it about, what would you say, what was it about those, the um, other players that made it, um, because what I also try to do is ensure that we have an, a balanced argument where, because like you said, it's football, it could just be that that other team were just particularly rough you know, and they just felt that they just wanted to be horrible to your team. Um, what would you say stood out that made it quite clear that this is beyond the game? There's, they could have been just trying to wear you down with just being horrible, but at what point does it move from, this is no longer the expected part of the game and it has moved on to racial elements? What, would you say that you could, point to something of course in this okay. um, specific situation okay. normally you tackle someone they fall down <clears throat> sorry they fall down to the ground yeah but in this situation they tackle you and racial slurs come out as well okay and that's where the problem occurs where it um, okay. goes overboard okay so they so they start using words that very clearly targets you as, uh, targets you as a as a black person, as a black person okay yes. we won't use the words we, we understand what those what those kind of words are um so I, I just wanted to make that clear because you know they're you know games rugby football these are you know contact sports and you know in the heat of the moment or it's just part of the game you know you kind of expect a little bit of a rough and tumble but i want to understand where this crosses into what can be termed as racism or some form of discrimination and so i would ask you then how do you deal with it because I'm sure that's not a one-off. Um, over the years, how have you dealt with, um, I mean, I remember uh, when you were younger, when you guys were younger, I can't remember who was playing, what, uh, which one of you was playing because you all play football. Um, and even parents get so excited that they don't quite understand or they don't quite realize when certain things come out of their mouth. And I'm talking about these children being like 10, 11, 12, that, you know, there are times where I would like, I remember a particular one that I kind of looked at her. It wasn't directed at you guys, but it was directed at another Black player. And I remember looking at her and she caught my eye and I knew that she did not mean to say it out loud. So there is something that's kind of, in there where it comes out when it needs to come out. So again, how, how do you, how would you deal, how, or how have you been dealing with 
um, racist situations in, in sports? I mean, now that I'm older, I feel like I deal with it a bit better than when I was younger. Okay. So the shock of someone being racist during a football match isn't as intense as it used to be. It's okay. sort of a thing in sports now, when you grow up playing sports, you kind of expect it. Mm. The shock is still there, but okay. it's still less offended and more kind of just disappointed. Mm. Okay. So after, so after a while, okay. I kind of stopped reacting to it because the more you react to it, the more it will impact your mental health. It kind of affects the way you play. Some people actually quit the, the sport because of racism. Yeah. So I feel like if you really do enjoy the sport, it's something that you do have to put up with, but something that you shouldn't have to put up with. That's right. Okay. All right. Thank you, Aimee. Mm. Um, I'm going to stop again and see if anyone has any questions for Aimee Day and um, if there's anything you want to ask him while, while we've got him. He's going off to bring yeah, I, I've got a question. Um, okay. I've got a question. Um, Thank you. In, in, from what you described and, you know, how the opposite players were attacking you, in your own club, um, how did the the, the, the footballers who are not black or Africans or Caribbeans, um, how did they respond to the attacks that were being meted out to yourself and the other black player? Oh, my I team were, they were really supportive in my situation. Obviously I'm part of their team, it's more like a family. So once yeah. the manager, the coach, or even the players Build, um, kind of caught on and I did report them to my players they kind of did go to the ref trying to stop the game to try and get the situation sorted even after the game we reported it to the official league in charge of all the teams um, okay. campaigns such as um, Kick It Out which is a campaign that sorts out racism okay. yeah. in even professional situations yeah. to try and get this sorted we did manage to get the team fined and I think um, awesome. some players did fined. so that was something that they did take on upon themselves to do, which is really supportive of them. Brilliant. Okay. okay. Thank yeah. you for that. Yeah, that's fine. That's all I wanted to find out. All right. Thank you. Any any other questions? John, can I just okay. say, ask something, um, Ayomi Day? You said something and which brought out um, um, a thought in my head. And um, it's about the fact that some young people um, pull out of something that they like doing, they enjoy doing because of the treatment and um, and the response and the racism they get within that. Isn't that, and like you said, and then you said something about, okay, it's not such um, a surprise anymore. It's just more of a disappointment. And I think mm. that's, that, that is just really, really sad. Yeah. Um, because when, when something doesn't, doesn't shock you anymore and it's just a disappointment mm. um and many times I've, I've been in situations when um this kind of things happen to you and you just it's not a shock anymore it's just really i i really expected more from you than 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 yeah. you know than oh do, do you really do that so it is it when it's hearing it again it's really it's really sad um that it's a, it is more of a disappointment. I think for many many people, not just yourself, um, like me, it is it is more of a disappointment because um, maybe because it's not staring in your face twenty four seven. So when it does hit you, it's it's bringing down your expectations. It's just lowered lowered something within you and and takes away something. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if it was a yeah. more question or a statement or, or, or an experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's something I definitely agree with. That, you know, yeah. True. Because you, you just think that, you know, again, this thing again, <laughs> when is this going to, but, but because I suppose because you're focused on your sports and whatever else, you're just thinking, you know what? Uh, you shouldn't have to deal with it like that. But we have a question for Ayamide, and this is from Omoti um, on Facebook. And she said, Ayamide, how would you handle issues of racism? I that's a good question. I when I do come across racist situations that happen to me that are targeted towards me, because it's happened before when I was younger, 
and it's still happening now, I kind of not ignore it, but I choose not to react to the players because two things could happen. It could I could get penalised for arguing during the match or the situation could intensify and that can lead to a problem. So I'd rather not escalate certain situations that could involve harm to me or my team. Mm. Okay. That's almost like you're sacrificing your own self. And it's, really, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have to, but... Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. And thank you, Omoti. That was a really good question. Because I thank think you. it's important for us to find out how the young yeah. people are yeah. able to yeah. react. Yeah. Oh. So thank you for that, Oyami, dear. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Deborah. Okay, all right. So I think um, Ayumi Day has to say goodbye because he's got training. So. Thank you so much for having me. It was great to be on this discussion. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you, Day. Wish you all the best. Enjoy training. Bye. All the best. Thank you. Okay, so we continue. Um, now, I have some information from Young Minds UK, um, and they do a lot of work with um, um, children, young, young adults. I don't want to keep saying children, um, generally, um, in relation to their mental health. But they also work with children of ethnic um, backgrounds as well, um, in terms of racism. So it is valid if someone feels like they are experiencing racism indirectly as well, because not all racism is direct. It's not all the time somebody's gonna come to your face and say you so and so and so. Sometimes it's very subtle, you know, very indirect. And, um, and that can have an effect. I would even say that is more impactful on your mental health or on their mental health than the direct one. Because you know the direct one is, it is what it is, you said what you've got to say, I could choose to react, I could, you know. But when it's subtle, it, it requires a little more um, imagination to ensure that I am passing a message across that lets you know that I don't like you because of the color of your skin. It requires a little bit more. Sometimes the things going on around us, uh, you know, to people like us, can they can feel like they, it could be happening to other people, like it could be happening happening to parents, for, for example, um, or other family members or friends. And sometimes uh, these children, these teens, take it in as if it is happening to them. You know, it's not unusual for. I know my own children to come back and say, mom, you won't believe what happened to so and so and so and so. And I would say, so what did you guys do? Oh, I said, so I'm like, okay. So there are times where just witnessing other people going through racism can affect uh, young adults as well. And sometimes, like I said, it could be towards family members or constant negative headlines about a group you identify with or country that you have ties to. How many times have we heard about how Nigerians are fraudsters and, and our children are having to listen to that? You know, um, how many times have we heard all these negative things about African countries or African nations or whatever? And, and children who maybe have never been there are having to listen to these things from the media in order to make sense of you know, their own racial background, um, misinterpretation from the media also. Um, and sometimes reading statistics that show unfairness and inequality across the justice and health system. Um, so what are some of the impact of racism on mental health? Because that is what we want to focus on tonight. For a lot of these young adults, uh, racism impacts uh, mental health in so many different ways. Um, sometimes they experience socially afflict inflicted trauma. So um, that is uh, something that they have directly witnessed or, um, or mental, physical, or, or it could be sexual as well. Um, sometimes economic and social inequality, you know, sometimes, you know, you, they experience racism as a result of maybe 
not having enough money, you know, um, they're not able to keep up with other children. They're not able to buy certain things that other children are able to buy. And so therefore they get bullied, get called names at school by other children. Um, sometimes the inequality of access to positive aspects of social environment, all those words just simply mean the inability to do fun things that other children are able to do. The inability to take part in social activities like maybe some other children are able to do. So like after maybe um, uh, during the summer holiday or something and children go back to school and talk about, oh, I went to Spain, I went to France, I went here, I went there. And uh, children who are, you know, of ethnic background, if they have not been able to do some of those things, um, it could be something that could be built on that, oh, how come you didn't go anywhere or, or something like that. So that's another area. Now, there are physiological changes that can impact on young, young teens. Um, and what do I mean by that? Your physiology is a combination of how you, the, the physics and the chemistry impact on how your body responds to a situation. So for example, if you are under a lot of stress, as soon as your body is going to start showing your body, whether it's uh, constant headaches, for some children it's bellyache, for some children it's, um, they start to exhibit um, symptoms of anxiety. So it does have physiological changes as well. Um, if, if you're having, if they're having to go to work, um, if young teens are having to go to work, for example, and it's just something about their boss, they can't quite put their finger on it, but this boss just never gives them a chance to either contribute or to be a part of the team. Those sort of things, the more they pl it plays on their mind, the more it wears them down. And before you know it, these children are signing up sick because, or, they, or they're saying they don't want to go to work. Uh, because of the experiences that they're having. Also, um, racism on mental health um, has some cognitive, it can cause cognitive changes as well. Um, and what do I mean by cognitive changes? This is just the way we think. Um, think the way we think about ourselves, the way we think about the people around us, and the way we think about the world around us. So in the longer term, there are cognitive changes with increased vigilance on racism. So this is the kind of behavior and the kind of experience that could make someone feel a little bit paranoid. So even when someone is not being racist towards you, you they could develop this attitude of, what, well, did you say that because I'm Black? We've heard that before, right? <laughs> is it because I'm Black? But the truth is they have experienced racism and they're now extra vigilant, extra sensitive. They're thinking maybe that person said that because, because of my skin color. And it may, may or may not have anything to do with your skin color. But because you've experienced it and you've experienced it so many times, you become that, that little bit more sensitive about it. Um, so um, of course, this can also help build resilience because there are times where, you know, it's through adversity that we build strength sometimes. And a lot of these things go through what is considered very difficult situations. If you can go through it and you can build strength and resilience out of that, it only gives you more ammunition for your next battle. Because I, like I always say, there's always another battle. The battles just never end. So, um, for now, I'm going to kind of stop and ask if anybody has anything to say um, before I move on to how we can improve mental health or how young teens can improve uh, mental health um, if they've been if they've experienced racism. So I'll stop for a little bit. Any questions? Okay. Um, I don't know. It's not a question. It's um, something you picked out, and I think it's. Um, um we just need um some more um discuss around it and it's um you you actually what i've written down is social determinants impacting racism um um and one that stood out as you were talking was economic um 
um, determinants. So, like you said, some some young peeps, young people are not able to afford certain things, mm-hmm. makes them awkwardly stand yeah. out, yeah. and then be um, a point of um, of um, um, abuse and um, and racism and taunting and all of that, mm-hmm. which probably then borders on bullying as well. But um, it is yes. Um, can we just discuss a bit more because um, sometimes people don't actually understand that economic situations or lack of financial resources um, can you know determine um, people getting um, racially abused. Oh, of course. Yes. That's that's a very good point. Um, and, and with that, I will, I will tie it back into um, just not being able to participate in what other children are participating in for whatever reason. And unfortunately, your race suddenly comes into it. Maybe that Black people don't do slumber parties. And I'm giving you examples. I, I grew up in the States and I'm giving you real examples. I'm giving you examples about I, I, when I was growing up, I was not allowed to, in America, we don't wear um, a school uniform. We don't wear school uniform, mm-hmm. um, but I wasn't allowed to wear skirts and dresses. And for whatever reason, that was interpreted as I was hiding a tail. Yeah, yeah. I was hiding a tail. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I get the most stupid questions like are you dark because you you don't have a shower regularly um why don't you wear dresses is it because you're hiding the tail needless to say i got into a lot of fights at school when i was younger but um that was that was how i, that was how I grew up um my i was just not allowed to wear dresses as you know that it, we all have different rules at home mine did not allow me to wear dresses i was only in jeans and pants and that was used as a racial situation so in the same way if a child could not maybe um and and you know how children are with the little cliques and this group is have is spending the night with this group and this group is having a party and you kind of have to fit in and if you don't fit in well some reason your race comes into it. Now, unfortunately, this does continue into um, late teens and into adults. Um, So you've, like our children now, you know, a lot of them have gone to university. We all know they don't come out and just step into a a job. Um, That alone can cause issues. So you, they have this Um, anxiety of attending interviews. At the same time, you need to look a certain way. You need to behave a certain way. So there are a lot of economic elements involved in how um, one is impacted on, uh, how it impacts on mental health. Um, But uh, I think we discussed earlier how the important thing, as we discussed about two weeks ago, is resilience we have to be able to teach children resilience from the start and how do we do that because you can't really teach it is not because you don't know what scenario is that you're going to come across so you teach your children resilience by teaching them how you deal with stuff so you come back from work and this is the situation you go somewhere this is the situation um you teach your children how you dealt with it which means you need to understand how you need to deal with stuff so that you can tell them if you ever come across this or this is what is happening to me. If they experience something similar, they're able to, okay, well, I, I, I kind of understand this. This is how my dad, my mom, my aunt dealt with it. Um, but yes, it's, it's, I think it's a road that they need to travel and, and mm. the best, we can do is ensure that they are mentally stable enough to go through it yeah okay can i ask because we're dealing with children or not children young um teens and adults at what age you know we have this this ongoing conversation about the right age and appropriate age to broach some subjects 
at what yeah. age would be um, the best age to start speaking to these young minds about the, the, um, the, the fact that, you know, at some stage they are going to come across this because I remember years ago in a playground that these were five and six year olds and it's six when, I don't know if you remember when the Spider-Man came out and Spider-Man, they had, you had the black Spider-Man and a child was told that they can't be the black Spider-Man because well, they, they can't be, um, they have to be the black Spider-Man. They can't be the red and blue spider, you know? And it was all of, it was, so I'd, I'd like to hear what the, what's the best age for us to know when to have that discussion. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good question, but I would also say that with a lot of these things, you take the cues from your children. Um, so if a child comes back from school or from wherever and they say something, you use that as the opportunity to address that topic. Um, I, I always feel that young minds are very, um, very fertile minds, very spongy minds in, in, in the sense that whatever it is they see, whatever they hear, they take it all in. So if they're going out and they're being spoken to in a certain way, or uh, they have been told something and they come back home and talk about it, I would use that as an opportunity to address it and say, okay, well, this, this doesn't really matter or that doesn't really matter or don't look at it this way or don't look at it, depending on what the situation is. Um, so the age is really difficult, but whatever age it is, it needs to be in a language that is age appropriate to that child. And I say that even, I will extend that to say that you could sit five, six-year-olds together and tell them exactly the same information, and they will all walk away with a different understanding and interpretation. Sure of what I've said. So it really is also about understanding what level of maturity and understanding is that child? Are they able to handle this information? And if it's something that needs to be discussed, but it's somewhat heavy, then I think it's important to break it down. Break it down, make sure that it's in a language that they understand. Yeah? Yeah. Does that answer it a little bit? That totally answers it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, okay. okay. All right. So um, I'm going to um, move on to what teens can do to maybe improve their mental health. Um, again, I'm focusing on, on teens and young adults that are or have experienced some form of racial discrimination. So um, if we, if they find, or if we find that uh, racism is starting to affect their mental health, it is important that we um, advise them and encourage them to speak to somebody they trust. So if we, you know, as a teacher or a professional working with children or even parents, and I just want to kind of seize this opportunity to um, tell people, um, if your child, if you are the first to um, realize or, or come to the knowledge that your child is experiencing some form of discrimination, racism, um, and you don't know what to do. Well, actually, you do know what to do because you're listening to us right now. We are here to support you and we're help, here to help. So please do not wonder what to do. Don't get in fights like I used to do when I was younger. Um, please reach out and, um, and, and we are happy to support you and your child through that period. So the first thing to do is to speak to somebody that you trust. And that person could also be a family member, could be a, a friend, it could be just someone that you can talk to because at least you get it out. So if, if your child is able to talk to you about it, please do not overreact. Don't go there and say, I'm gonna show them I'm from Africa today, yeah? Don't do none of that. Please give us a call. We are more than happy to support you. Now, because we are talking about mental health, we do need to involve the family doctor, the general practitioner, because depending on the severity of um, the experience, some children, some young adults, especially if it's been going on for quite a while, like Amy, they said um, not too long ago that it's something that 
he has experienced before it's from when he was younger. He's been playing football since he was able to walk. Mm. But depending on how traumatic this traumatic this is, some young teens can start to experience uh, post-traumatic stress disorder as a result of this. It starts to affect confidence. They start to remember every time they, they're unable to overcome that experience. And so it's very important to um, ensure that the doctor knows about it. Um, and if they're experiencing low mood or you can see signs of depression or low self-esteem because that's what racism does if somebody is, if people are constantly asking you why your, color, your skin color is so dark or why, why you're not wearing dresses, have you got a tail? After a while, you start to think, okay, there must be something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. So there are, if, if you are constantly, if the child is constantly experiencing that, it's very possible that they will have low self-esteem Theme, feel numb or empty inside, feel worthless, like they feel like they're not important, feel like nobody cares. Nobody. And I just want to also say this very quickly. Parents, do not beat yourself up when your children go through depression. If you know that you're not the direct cause of that situation, children go through mild bits of depression as they grow. It is related to hormones. It is related to friendships and peers and all kinds of stuff. And it tends to be a, just a, a, a passing phase. But when you can see that the child is stuck, then you do need to do something about it. And I say that um, your first point of call should be to the doctor, speak to your doctor about it. Other things you will notice is uh, sleeping habits may change. They may sleep a lot earlier than they used to, or they may not go to sleep for until the very uh, um, early hours of the morning. So there are things that you can kind of um, pick up on that has become something new as a way to gauge if something is bothering your child. Eating habits also is something to look out for. Okay, um, I'll move on to the next one, which is about learning your rights and how to report abuse. We have to make it clear that a, a, a part of our fundamental human rights is the right to be able to speak freedom of speech, freedom of life and movement, freedom you have what one ethnic group has as a freedom, you have it as a freedom too. And if somebody is uh, infringing on your freedom, we need to uh, empower them, we need to equip them, we need to give them the knowledge that they need to be able to report it. I mean, if it was happening in school, then of course you go to a teacher, let's start from there. Uh, um, encourage your children to discuss things with you. Um, anything bothering them. Once you pick up on their behavior anyway, I would imagine parents are already in there asking what is the matter, what's going on. Okay, so please let us um, teach them how to, to report abuse. Another thing that we can do to kind of help and support uh, mental health if a teen or a young adult is experiencing racism is to find support support groups within the community. There are lots and lots of support groups in different communities. You are not alone. And I, again, will use that opportunity to call you back to us. Um, if you are feeling that your child is experiencing this, please do not hesitate to contact Saffron. We're here to help. Okay, and um, there are online communities as well, but you know, come to us, um, that, that's why we're here. And also, there's something else that um, young teens and adults can do. And this is an absolute fantastic way to empower yourself. Join a movement, create that change, create that change, that change that you wanna see, start a movement. You know, your movement is not, I'm not advocating for, um, you know, violence or anything like that, but I am saying join a movement, start a movement, a group of you. Um, you can go out into the community, you can educate people more. Um, there are many anti-racist movements and organizations who are fighting for change in the society. So encourage your children to be a part of that. Um, I... Um, when the uh, 
uh, was that Black Lives Matter became a massive thing not too long ago here in the UK. Um, my, my son was a part of the march. Yes, I, we have some reservations about BLM, but there are other organizations that um, encourage you to stand up for yourself, fight for your rights without being violent, without you know um, being oppressive. Um, so I would say that another great way to encourage children, and, and the thing about mental health is, when it comes to it's it's really about how we're processing a lot of things it doesn't take away from the idea or the fact that there's racism going on but you know how they say that it's not what has happened it's how you react to it how are you reacting to it so i would encourage any young person that take that anger take that frustration and flip it around do something positive with it. And in doing that, not only will you empower yourself, you will empower a whole lot of young people like yourself in your community. So um, I'm going to end there and um, ask a question, which is, are we as parents, educators, mentors, um, professionals, and so on and so forth, are we able to recognize if or when our teens and young adults are experiencing racial discrimination or abuse, which is or has resulted in mental health. And that is my question for you tonight. I hope that this has been informative. Thank you very much. Awesome. Wow. wow. Thank you so much, Deb. Uh, you have blown my mind as usual. Um, it's been more than informative, you know. I loved how you ended. Um, it is not what has happened, but how you react. Um, and I can, sh I'm, I'm sure speaking on behalf of so many parents, when we get that call at the end of the school day, mom, can I have a word? And you find out it's usually because the child, our child has reacted to a situation um, and they're focusing on the reaction and leaving the catalyst. Yeah. What has triggered that reaction? Um, but yeah, we have to. I'm just going to pop in what Mr. Ube Suleiman Abdul has said. Mm -hmm. Children should learn not to see themselves as the problem. That way they can easily overcome racism. Yeah, and I, and I love that. And I'll tell you why, because many a times, you know, um, you know, you hear from, from children within our community and they, they will come home and say, what's, the, what's wrong with me? You know, that is a question that is, you know, um, asked quite a lot. Um, I used to run an after school club and a breakfast club and I had a mixture of children. And you'd always find that the children that came from the African and Caribbean communities, there were always those questions. And, you know, you talked about the um, social inequality and, you know, where these children come back and after the six weeks in September, they've gone to Spain or they've gone to Florida, Disney World. Oh, wait, so where did you go? And you're sitting there. It's, oh, you didn't go anywhere. Oh, well, can't you afford it then? Or, you know, they have these kind of discussions and you, you can, it does affect, it doesn't matter whether we are the best parents in the world, it doesn't matter whether you have the best support system. And this is what I think is good for us to put out there, um, parents. It's not anything you are doing. This is the, these are the effects of, you know, racism on the mental health of our young people. And um, you've heard from Deborah, you've heard from a professional, you've heard how we can, you know, um, listen to your children. It's very important. It's always come up in our programs. Um, the young ones, we've had a few of them on here in the past, and it's always been a case of, we don't listen to them. Uh, I'm holding my hand up, so I'm not pointing the finger. <laughs> we don't listen, you know, because we're too busy. Either we're on the phone or I come on Zoom and they'll come and they'll open my door and they'll think, oh, she's on Zoom and, you know, and sometimes I'll tell, I'll probably say with my hand, you lot can't see, I'm telling them to wait because at that point, you never know what it is they need to say. So let's create time, find time to listen because it's that, the mental health that we're talking about that person that they need to speak to might be you. So um, yes, I'm just, as I'm talking, I'm just basically trying to check if we have any more questions.
questions or statements on Facebook. And at this point in time, we don't. So I'm going to now throw the mantle to anybody on the Zoom. I want to just welcome um, Omotola Ayodele. You're welcome. I also see, uh, just bear with me, Councillor Fumi Ademilua. I hope I got that right. Good evening. A fresh face to the, to the Zoom. You are welcome. Um, Marcia, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself, my young lady. Good evening, Marcia. Marcia is one of our directors. Hello, hello. Hi. Sorry that I'm off camera. I'm not. That's fine. Most of us were off camera because of the heat. So you introduce Thank you, D. That was so good. I've been listening. That was so good. And I like the question that you asked. You know, how many of us can recognize it? And I can't tell you I can. I actually can't say I can. So it's, it's a very good question to get us thinking. I'm sorry, let me introduce myself. My name is Martha Eliza and I'm the Director for Youth Engagement and Intervention. Thank you as usual for joining us tonight. And I hope that you'll take a lot away because our resident psychologist has given us a lot that we can take away and implement. And I do, um, I do appreciate that. Some of the things that she said in terms of um, young people is recognizing the signs yeah. is so important because you know our young people don't talk and sometimes we, we could see that as good or we can see that as bad so it's knowing when there's a difference i think that's that's quite important so thank you deb it was quite good thank you thank you so much for that marcia um and if there's anybody else that has um anything they would like to please 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 unmute yourselves and lend your voices to this discussion because this is um, something that I, I think affects all of us. Um, you know, we are in, we had the 4Gs Kings and Queens on um, for the whole of last month and something that came up in their community was racism and how they're facing it. And this is in a particular, in, up in Ireland. So, you know, you can imagine the effects on the, their young teens um, and young adults. If the adults, as in the parents, are struggling, I, I don't even want to think um, about how the young children, um, the young teens and the young adults are, are also coping. So I know some of them are on tonight and I'm hoping that this session has been very informative for yourselves. Uh, Temitope, I see you. Um, um, Omoti, I am believing you're on here, uh, but I definitely have seen you on Facebook. So I'm hoping that for all of you that um, this has been very informative and you're able to take away something, some nuggets on how you can possibly deal with your, your, your young ones. Hi, Temi Top Bears, nice to see you. Thank you for coming on. So yes, um, how do we recognize the signs? Do you know the signs? You know, our young children, they don't, they don't tell us. What they do is they go and stay in their rooms and they lock the door and they stay in there for the whole day and they surface when they want to eat. Um, is that a sign that they're being racially abused? We don't know. Or is it a sign that they just want to be left alone? Um, you know, it's hard. As a parent these days, it is really hard um, because we, we can never, unless you engage with them, unless you speak to them, you're never going to know. Um, I know it's hard. In the morning, you get a, how are you, my son? <gasps> you know, they grunt, they do. But, you know, let's not take it personal. This is how they are. Let's learn. Sometimes, you know, sitting down, I don't know how many people sit down at the dinner table anymore. That seems to have fizzled out with, with a bit of time. But for those of us that do, are there, have you noticed, do you notice any, the body language of your child? You know, were they flippant and very boisterous before and now they're very reserved? You know, there are little signs. And then the outbreak. Um, D, you mentioned the, um, the chemistry, the physiological changes, you know, um, our kids go through puberty, so you will get the acne. Not every acne is acne. Some of those spots you're seeing are stress related. And the minute that stress is sorted out, those spots go. But the only how we can ever know is by engaging and speaking to them. Um, yes. So I've got, a, I'm going to, Omotola Ayodele, okay. Are you, if you are online, I would rather you, if you want to stay behind camera, that is absolutely fine. 
Right, I see what you've written. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask, okay, we're, we're, not going to, we're not going to deal with this here and now, but what I would ask is um, if you, if you're able to tell this, this story, if you're able to tell this story with, with that, because I, I didn't put the disclaimer, which I should have done, and I'm so sorry. We don't allow the mentioning of names. We don't allow the mentioning of actual, especially if there are situations that investigations are ongoing. Um, I have to put out this, that disclaimer. So unfortunately, what you've typed, I am not going to be able to read it out because um, we are live. We do like to hear your stories. We want to hear the stories but we do ask that you do not name names. You do not talk about anything that is personal um, unless you're able to tell us the story generically. So I have seen what you've written um, and what I think we'll do if you are, are outside of the Zoom, you can always speak to Saffron. We are here, that's, that's why we're here in the community um, to be able to help and support you and give you any guidance. So that is for you. Um, Omotola Ayodele, okay? So thank you for writing that. And what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll address that with you at some point. But if there's anything you want to talk about relating to the correlation of racism and the mental health of our young people and young adults, please feel free to unmute yourself and have the floor. Yamisi Jenkins is on. Tell me, I see you've unmuted yourself. Do you have something you'd like to say? Can't hear you. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Hi. I always have something to say because can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Hi. Yes, yeah, sorry. I think I always have something to say. That's because fine. Most of this thing is what I deal with day to day at sure. my place of work and our place of worship as well. Yeah. Because I mainly deal with um small children and teenagers. Mm -hmm. So they get to talk to me more. Um when I joined, the, uh, what, what, the first thing I heard when listening to this, we should listen more to, their, to our children. And I think last week I said it. We don't have time to listen to them. So at the end of the day, they don't tell us what is really going on. And, you know, before we know it, they start withdrawing, uh, withdrawing from the family not wanting to do all these family things. One thing I make sure I do, we, we know we all have a busy life. We have, especially those of us in um, abroad. We go to work, we come back late and everything. I always make sure that we have one meal together as a family. Even if, at, if it's on week, during the weekend, maybe breakfast, I make sure the kids are there in the kitchen and we started talking and everything. So I ask them what's happening. Um, I have a case that it's only God that saved the teenager, you know. She was being um, abused at school because she really had a very dark complexion. You know, one of those that have the that the that, that, that complexion is black and she's been told like, oh, if there is darkness, it's only at six that is white, that will let them know she's there and everything. And they're telling, they're calling her fat. Um, according to the girl, she, she tried to tell her mom, but her mom is one of those, uh, I'm busy, I'm tired, I don't have time to talk. And you know, this girl, Gradually, she starts, when she finished eating, she goes to the toilet to throw up. Gradually, she doesn't want to eat. And because of this racial, um, this thing thing, she doesn't really like herself. She lost her self-confidence in herself. And before you know it, she tried to commit suicide. She started self-army. And it was one year into it that her mom found out when she tried to commit suicide. I think then she took um, 40 paracetamol and it went on for one year, you know, she was in and out of hospital. 
And you know, it really affected our mental health. And the only thing that caused this was because our parents, well, it's a single parent woman, the mom could not listen to, would not listen to her. And it's affecting the siblings as well. And I have more youths, even not you teenagers that are not even um, Africans. I have some teenagers from the European countries that I do talk to, and they always come to me like, oh, things because they can't have this proper discussion with their parents at home. They needed someone to talk to. And be because I'm always there, mostly at my work, all these girls, they come to me, they discuss, we talk. So the ones I can give them advice on, I'll give them advice on. The ones I can't, I'll just tell them, you know what, I will seek professional help for you. But the major part of it is this. We need to pay attention to our kids. My, my own child has been, has been a victim of that. And he was trying to tell me something and I was doing, I was doing an assignment and I just told him, oh, just leave me. And he went back to his room. He was lying there, which is unusual of him. So after 20 minutes, I was like, oh, what's going on? Then I went to his room. What's, then I asked him, what's, up, what's going on, darling? He was like, oh, mom, no, don't worry. It's okay. And I was like, no, it's not okay. You need to tell me. This is unusual of you. You're always sitting there in the sitting room, playing, doing everything. So why are you in your room at this time and sleeping? He's like, oh, nothing. Then it was like, later after 10 minutes of playing around with him and asking and I said oh um, my friend at school told me um Christian hates Muslims and that's why they are killing themselves and so we can't be friends anymore so I just said oh no that's not true and I asked him do you know your grandma she, he said yes do you, your grandma is a Muslim? He said, yes. We are Christian. He said, yes. You know, auntie, so, 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 so. I kept mentioning people that are Muslims and Christian. And I asked him, do we hate each other? Yeah. He said, so I said, no. So you see now, Muslim and Christian don't hate each other. But because some people just have um, issues, that's why they're, and they're not killing themselves. So I tried to. So at the end of the day, I had to go to the school to tell them like please can you educate these kids more because mm -hmm. this is going on and on and on and i'm sure it's not all it's not just my son that yeah. these students have talked to them um, i've told this mm -hmm. can you try to do this so at the end of the day they i think they had to put in another religion education and they actually did a program okay. that integrates all religion together awesome Brilliant. at the school so mm -hmm. it changed the perspective that even when he was having his birthday i make sure that he invited all his muslim friends mm -hmm. well done inclusion and the mom's mom, sure. like and they come and and they did come brilliant which does themselves i make sure to ask them what food and what food you don't eat mm. so they know to put it there and to make sure and you know so since then it's like change his perspective, uh, perspective of everything yeah. Yeah. But if I didn't listen to him, if I didn't even pay attention, it's my go out of it. And it might even come to the family like, oh, well, you are Muslim, I'm Christian, we're not friends. Sure, sure. Awesome. Thank you so, so much for that, Tammy Tukbe. That's insight. Just because of time, I'm going to have to stop you there because I've got two other people waiting to talk. But yeah, that, that was um, an amazing um, perspective. No, no, there's nothing to be sorry about. That was amazing perspective. So thank you so much. Um, for that, I'm going to ask. Okay, I know somebody else had their hand up. Um, okay, let me see. I'm going to ask you to unmute, and then while I look for the other person, go ahead. Hello, everyone. No, I just um, listening to um, the lady, Sebitokwe Omwakitola, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think it, it's not that it has just occurred to me, but I think we need to do uh, a lot more in um, 
talking to parents about how important it is when our children are seeking our attention and we're saying, you know, leave me alone, I'm tired. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. um, with my boys when they were growing up, and I do this with all my friends, even my sister that has a 10 year old, whenever I'm on the phone with her and my nephew comes to her to say, mom, can I, I, I just say to her, I would, you know, go and attend to him. At times it's just a case of maybe he wants a drink or he just wants attention. But for me, that very moment is very important because you never know what is going through that child's head. Sure. And once you miss that moment, you will never get it back because then to them, you know, they would always be um, the, for the better use of, you know, word, second fiddle, mommy has more important things to do. Um, so rather than bother her, let me just um, either keep it within or start seeking advice from the wrong people. So um, I think we still have more to do. Um, how we're going to do it, I don't know. But I think that we need to, I think we need to repeat this, um, this session. Um, I and my part, um, I, will, I promise that I would push it, out, push it out more because we just need to have that conversation. I mean, listening to that lady, you can imagine the trauma that young girl went through only because her mom and not the mom's fault because we need to yeah. get that balance right some yes. people it is not be, it is not their fault it's just maybe they're just tired you know when you're just tired and you it's can't nice. but, nice. but the thing is we cannot afford because we're the parents here mm -hmm. we have to continue to put all the burden on ourselves until these issues are resolved so it's, it's just a plea that if we can repeat this program, but we um, and have you know um, the likes of D and um, Timmy Tokwe come back. Let's everybody come back and um, let's share experience. We're not blaming anyone. We're not we're not saying somebody is a bad parent or a good parent. But having said that, we have to be frank as well. No sentiments here. I know that there are times when I'm watching Nollywood. I don't hear, that is when, if you ask me to sell my life, I will, you know, without knowing, but I learned that when I overheard my children plotting against me when they were only eight and eight and eight and six. Okay. So I was able to get myself out of that. But there's so many people that don't even know that that is what they're doing and the impact mm. of my children. Sure. That's it. Thank you. But well Thank done. you so much. Thank you, Yemisi. And, you know, you just... You, you, I love what you said that we need to do something. Uh, the, the you I know, you're a doer, you're an action woman. Um, and in, in saying that, you know, Saffron too, we, we, we do our Zooms, but as I say this, I say this every time I come on the Zoom, our life doesn't end on the Zoom. There is still so much we're doing the minute we stop the cameras from rolling. So in answer to your, we need to do something, we've done something. Saffron has... Um, started parenting classes. Um, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to allow the person who is going to be dealing with the parenting classes because at the moment, um, you know, th 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 this is her baby. So I'm just going to ask Dee to unmute just to give us an insight um, into what parents, and you can hear there is a need um, wow. for parents. If you could just Good give us me. a Good evening, Omoti. We're going to come to yeah. you very shortly. Oh, sorry. No. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> I saw your hand up. Just bear with me. So, Dee, if no you can problem. just quickly give an insight into the parenting classes so that if there are any parents out there that require our assistance, then, you know, they, they, they know. Thank you, Dee. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. I'm, I'm really glad we've been able to pick out a few things from this. Um, and, and as everybody has said, the important things is just really being attuned to the children. We have to be able to pick up not just on the verbal things that they come out with, but even their body language. A child does not need to say anything before as a mother, you pick up that something is not right. I'm sure we all understand what I'm saying, where your children don't say anything, but you're like, are you okay, baby? What's going on there? You're not saying anything. You're not 
we all just have that, well, I don't want to say all, but most mostly have that uh, instinct to just pick up on when something is not right. But the thing is, as everybody has said, that we have such busy lives and everything's happening at the same time that we push the instinct away and say, oh, I'll deal with it later. Oh, I'll talk to her before. I, I very quickly, I watched a, um, a documentary so to speak, on this father, this father who missed that one opportunity that he had to talk to his son. He, he didn't realize that when that child came and said, dad, I want to talk to you, he did not know that that was the last time he was going to speak to that child. And he was busy. And ordinarily, he's an attentive dad. But we don't always know what these children are going through. This boy had been suffering from bullies at school and he finally had, had picked up the courage to come and talk to his father about it. But dad was busy and he carried that guilt because that child walked away, went into his room and he hung himself. And for many years, he kept saying, what was I doing that was so important that I couldn't deal with this child but as well to make him understand that, you know, we're not perfect. We're parents, but we're not perfect. So uh, parenting classes, I have said it before, I am really looking forward to this. Um, I love the uh, opportunity to talk to people, to exchange ideas, but also to kind of work together to, um, to explore how we can be more attuned to our children how we can be more perceptive when we are when when it comes to our children. So um, that's mainly what parenting classes is going to be about. So I am not teaching anybody or telling anybody how to be a parent because there is no two parent parenting styles or or um, uh, yeah two parenting styles that is the same. What is important is that whatever style you choose to use ensure that your children's mental health is also in consideration. Ensure that, you know, it's not just about discipline. We need to balance discipline with a lot of love and, you know, balance being firm with teaching the children. But most of it is about communication, open communication, asking questions, being, yes, a friend to your child, and I don't mean friend where you are, but a friend that they know that I can go to my mom, I can go to my dad and I can talk about these things because they don't like talking. We have to make them comfortable enough to talk to us. So yes, that's kind of in a nutshell what parenting classes is gonna be about. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to that. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Dee. And we will be dropping the details for the parenting classes in the chat. Um, parenting classes will be starting. Um, it will be online. So, um, you know, we, we, we will be able to um, spread ourselves as far and wide as possible. And that will be from the second week of August. So online from the second week of August. Um, please, please, please check the details in the chat. And I, I, I would encourage every one of us, myself included, um, to join these sessions. Um, because we need to, we need to, we need to get things going. I'm not, do you notice I didn't say we need to get things right? Because in parenting, there is not a wrong or a right. Like Dee said, there, there are different parenting styles. You know, the way I parent my children is different from the way you parent. So, and also to let you know that in as much as we'll be on a Zoom, but it will be a very confidential environment. So if there are sensitive issues you need to share, we will provide that space for you. Um, for those of you who don't know, we already run the home office immigration um, sessions on, 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 on Zoom, um, where we provide a highly confidential space for those who have immigration issues. So in that vein, we will do the same with the parenting classes to make sure that you have a safe place um, to be able to air your your, your views, you know, to air your situations, because there could be some people out there, some parents who are struggling. Uh, Saffron is on hand to guide, support, 
um, and be there for you. And we aim to do that through our parenting classes. So you please also check our social media pages. We are on Facebook, we are on YouTube, we are on Instagram, we are on LinkedIn. We will be posting the details for the parenting classes um, and you would need to just click on to the link and, um, and join us. And it will, be, it will be very exciting to see as many of you um, as we can um, and to be able to have these discussions and get these things right because the, the youth, these are young people, that is our tomorrow. If we don't fix them today, then I don't even think I'm excited about going into tomorrow because we can't go into tomorrow with youth that have the severe mental health that we're seeing out there now. Um, but it, it's, it's fixable. Um, let, but we can only do that when we come together. And I think somebody, let me see, put in the, um, was reiterating what you said, Dee. It's very important to listen to them, watch their body language. Um, yeah, it's not easy. Life, you know, parents, life gets in, in, in the way, but sometimes drop what you're doing and listen to them. You don't want to be that child that walked into the father's room, like Dee said, walked out and the next minute he hung himself. Um, it's, mental health is real. Um, I, I would tell you now that a young lady came to my house maybe a, couple, a year ago. Yes, exactly a year ago. She came in on a Tuesday, a friend of my, my, my kids, beautiful, beautiful girl, dressed to the nines. We laughed, we joked. You could never, ever have known what was going through that young lady's mind. And within a week, she had hung herself. Um, that's why I said mental health is it's horrible. Um, so please, let, let, let's be there for the youth. And I'm not just saying for your own children. Let's be the eyes for other people's children as well, because I think it's very important. Some of those children don't have the support within their own home environments. Your home could be the, 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 that clinch that saves that child. You understand? It, it does happen. They would, be, they would rather speak to Auntie Yemi and speak to mommy Giz. It happens. And as a parent, I don't want you to feel slighted. Sometimes your child will feel much more comfortable speaking to auntie than speaking to mommy. I don't think that's the problem. The, the issue is that the child speaks to somebody, to anybody who will listen. So let's not get hung up that you, you don't speak to me. You only go and speak to your auntie. I would rather my kids speak to their auntie so far as somebody is going to listen yeah okay so let's get that right please look out for our parenting classes um, i think we're going to drop it in the chat and we'll drop it on our facebook now i'm going to open please um i want to yes thank you councillor fumi ademilua you've just typed in the chat good evening um and it's an amazing to to hear from you um if you'd like to unmute yourself and lend your voice um to what you've heard today if there's any contribution from yourself it would be amazing. Wura, good evening. It's nice to have you on. Oyewale, as usual. Uh, young man, I want to hear from you tonight. Um, I know you've been listening in. Um, it would be nice to have a bit of perspective on how we can help the youth going forward with their um, mental health. So please, guys, it is an open session. Please, please, please unmute. Let's talk. Remember our mantra, hashtag together we can. We can only do it with you. Good evening, Councillor Fumi. How are you? Good evening, honorable women of God in the house. Thank you so, so very much for inviting me. I hope my lovely sister is still there, uh, MC Jenkins, MBE. Yes. Thank you. Is. I just left a meeting. I rushed out of that meeting just to be able to you know, catch up with you guys. Thank you. I, I actually love what you're doing. I'm passionate about it. Um, my background is in counseling. I'm a trained uh, cognitive behavioral therapist. Wow. And I work with children and family and I could relate with everything uh, my lovely sister Dia said. And uh, I look forward to um, working together with the organization and we need to come together. I think what is missing is the community. We need to yes. establish a community where people can come and just discuss whatever they are going through with us. And like, as you said, um, that it's not about us, it's about the community. Um, 
it takes a community to raise a child. I sure. believe strongly in that saying. So I, I, I really love what you're doing and I look forward to, you know, working with you. Thank you so very much. Thank, oh, you. thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> you. Thank you for rushing out. Thank you, we yes. appreciate, we really do appreciate that. And we too um, definitely look forward to um, liaising because we, we know that partnershiping and collaborating is the only way forward. Um, if we don't link together, and, and become that one voice. Um, we're not going to bring the change we want to see within our community, but you know, I'm proud of us. I'm proud of, I'm not just proud of Safran, I'm proud of Safran, but I'm proud of all the other organizations that are, are opening their doors and opening their arms and saying, you know what, let's do this, let's come together. Um, it's really important. Thank you so much, Councillor, for dropping your details. We've picked that up and we will definitely be getting in touch with you. Um, and yeah, and this is a shout out to any other organization that could be out there listening. Um, there is enough piece of cake for everybody, I say it. And it's not about saffron. It's more about the impact we are going to make, we are making in community, you know, in our community. Um, we've seen what's happened with post COVID, even before COVID, there was mental health, you know, COVID has just been like a year now, a year and a half, two years. Um, even before COVID, we've seen um, a very high representation of our children in care, in the penal system. Um, and when you look at this country 30, 40 years ago, you know, you, you wouldn't see that. So something is not right. Something is leading, causing, there are triggers. And what are these triggers? And this is what we as a community need to, you know, look at. And the only way we can do that is by listening to our young people um so um at this stage i really want to just say you know it's been amazing we are still um let me ask my my boss because um i'm very hot today guys and the brain has has been i've tried honestly i'm sleeping here are we are we on next week with this um i yeah boss i believe that um the mbc um jenkins mb has asked us to um pull this forward so yes um, let's um, take this um, through to next week. Yeah, um, let's um, do it. That is, that is depending on on D as well. Yeah. Um, D, are we okay with you? And here as well with <laughs> us next week. Are you able? Are you available? I will do my best. I will do yeah. my best. <laughs> Not that we put you on the spot. <laughs> Yeah, it's what the community asks. That's what we give. So you've he asked. Really needs Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> you've yeah. asked, um, and oh, we've answered. So hopefully, I'm sure we'll be able to reel her in. We need her expertise. So I'm very sure that we'll find a way to um fit us into her busy schedule because she is a busy lady. But yeah, we we, uh, we do need to keep having this conversation. Um, and it would be nice if we can have some young ones. So. If you, I know, I know, guys. If the we'll be asking Oye Wale um, and um, to please um, spread the word out to Definitely. young people out the there to people. come over. Being that Oye Wale is um, is um, my 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 first millennial. <laughs> yes, Oye oh. Wale, if you could do that, can you unmute, please? Hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. How are you? I'm fine. Okay. Yeah, I've You're just been listening. listening. You've been listening, good. So you'll understand that we need some more of, you know, the young ones to come. We want to hear direct from them. You know, a lot of what we're doing now is what I call reported speech. Um, and it would be amazing to hear directly from the young ones, you know, how they react to this racism, how it's affecting their mental health. Um, what are they doing to combat it? You know, you guys are out there, you know, you're in the different fields of, uh, of the world. So some of you are models, you know, some of you are in, in, into um, sports, you know, you saw the backlash. How are you all coping as you? So if you have any young friends that would like to come on, we don't mind if they're behind camera, we get the street cred, but we would love to hear from them um, because it's when we hear from you and when the professionals hear from you, then we can take it away and work on it. Um, I and hear yes, you. Let, I just think. Have, yeah, go ahead, Oyewale. Let me have what your, are your views. views, please. Well, um, I was just gonna say, like you know, like we live in, we live at least, you know, I live in in London, UK, and you know, it's a predominantly white country anyway. You know, we're not in our 
in our home country. So I feel like a lot of people, you know, as unfortunate as an experience can be dealing with racism and stuff like that, you know, it's not really, it's not really something that's, you know, um, unordinary or whatever. So it's just, you know, I feel like, you know, everyone's in a, in a place of, you know, just live your life you know, the best you can and, you know, don't pay too much attention to it. Same way, you know, obviously it will have an impact on your life, but, you know, I feel like if you're spending so much energy focusing on that in the negative sense and not in the positive sense, as in like, you know, maybe, you're, you know, doing something or contributing to something that will, you know, provide support for people or whatever, you know, I just feel like there's, there's, there's things you can do about it, but there's not a lot that you can do about it, you know, immediately that will you know impact yourself so you know unfortunately the stance that many people have is just you know keep it going do you know just focus on what you need to do and that's that's you know my own kind of position outside of oh there's this thing i want to support this thing or this initiative or whatever it's definitely just a case of yeah you know like this is just the world how it is right now it'll get better hopefully but until it does I'm just going to do what I need to do, you know? There's no one thing I can do tomorrow. Obviously, it's a, like, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but in different ways, but there's no one action I'll do today or tomorrow that's going to, like, you know, change everything suddenly and everything will never be the same again, you know? It's obviously a collective action between, you know, myself and people around me. So because of, you know, that level of power and also powerlessness, I'm not going to stress myself. I feel like it's even more detrimental to, you know, your personal uh, mental health. If you're stressing yourself so much, or oh, what am I going to do here? What am I going to do there? You know? Um, so yeah, that's really where, where I think I am. And a lot of people are out with it, you know, because you experience stuff like this from like teachers in school and, you know, the bus driver driving past you and you're at the bus stop and all types of stuff. It's happened to me in different countries. It still happens to me now at my age, you know, and it's happened with me and maybe even a, 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 a more or a more grown person there that's also, you know, African as well. So, you know, I'll be like, oh, wow, this driver just, you know, drove past the bus or whatever. I might tell my friend and I'll carry on with my day because I'm not here to, you know, let it. I feel like everything that, you know, life is really about how you react to things. And, you know, I feel like if you're not controlling your reaction and stuff, then you're going to be heavily influenced and impacted. And obviously it's not, it's not about um, sealing off your emotions or not feeling your whatever way you are, but it's about not letting them overcome you and, you know, um, and put you out, you know, take you off your game, really. Awesome. I can't hear you, you're muted. No, I said awesome. Oh, we're all I'm just agreeing, I'm sorry. Just spot on, absolutely spot on, spot on. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Dee, you yeah. wanted to say something? Yes, I very quickly. Amazing, amazing. And this is exactly what I was saying earlier about resilience. You know, we don't want these young ones to walk around with a chip on their shoulder that, that everybody hates them, everybody's against them. You see it, you're resilient, and you move on. You get on with it. And if there's something you can do, it you're so inclined, you want to form a group, you want to be a part of a group, you want to make a change in whatever way you want to try, go ahead and do that if that'll help you. The most important thing is that there, there are no promises that we will not have some kind of difficulty and racism is just another one of the yeah. difficulties. So the important thing is how do you deal with it? Deal with how it. do you work with it? How is it impacting your mental health? Because that is the only time that I would say, okay, we need to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you're strong enough, if you can deal with it, get on with your day, get on with your day. So thank you, everyone. that was amazing, amazing. Well done, well done. Wow, awesome, thank you. And we, like we said, um, we will be carrying this discussion on um, next week, Wednesday, same time, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Hopefully it will be a much cooler weather then. So please, 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 if you are about, join us. We will be sending out the Zoom link. It's always lovely to have a full house. It's always really good to have new faces because then that means our family is growing. And like I always say every week, once you join Saffron's family, we never let you go. So thank you so much for coming on today. It's been an amazing, amazing session um, as always. And I know Facebook was bouncing as well. So thank you to all our Facebook viewers. Um, 
please, please, please share, 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 because when you share, we don't know who we are helping out there. Um, and if we if we can get hold of some of the young ones, our youth, please let's see if we can have them on next week um, at the same time, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, and yeah, so thank you. Uh, Joshua Ogumbi, we'd like to welcome you. You've just joined. I don't know whether you are on Facebook or you're just joining Zoom now, but it's brilliant to have you in the house. So thank you for coming on. We are going to be closing now. It's eight o'clock. Um, please, please, please remember our parenting classes will be starting second week uh, in August. Um, so please look out for the information. These are free classes. Um, so please spread the word. You will be, it will, in as much as it's going to be Zoom, but it's not going to be recorded. It's going to be a safe environment for you to share your stories, your situations, for us to talk, for us to come together um, and discuss issues and find solutions. Because it's not about just discussing, we need to find solutions. So I'm just going to say to everybody, have an amazing evening. Please, please, please remember hydration. Um, okay, Joshua, uh, would you like to unmute and uh, introduce yourself? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Sir. How are you? <laughs> yes. You? I'm happy to be with you. I'm on the invitation of uh, Olori. <laughs> Sorry, okay. I just opened my eyes up and I got a message late. So I okay. thought I would still meet up with you, but well, we'll meet up we hope the next time. My name is Joshua B from Plateau State in Nigeria. Wow. Good to be in your presence. Thank oh, you wow. very much. Thank you so much, sir. And Thank welcome you. all the way from Plateau State and send our love to Plateau State. And thank you Thank for you. joining us. Okay, Thank you bye. so much. Thank you Thanks. so much. You can join us next week, sir, because this oh, um, oh. this discussion continues next week, 6 p.m. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you to everybody. D. Marcia, Yemisi, Temitop, uh, Councillor Fumi, Oyewole, thank you all so much. Um, Wura, I'm sure you, you, you're you calling in from Nigeria because I remember you from for the past two weeks. You've been very consistent. So thank you to you as well. I want to say thank you to Four G's kings and queens, because you guys have been all blowing up Facebook for us. So thank you. Omoti, especially thank you for always carrying the mantle for Saffron Seca. We say thank you um, for that. And we hope to see you all back here again next week, same time, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Have a good evening, everybody. Um, and be safe in the sun. Um, I know we're going to have a couple more hot days until the weekend when it all goes down the drain. So just enjoy the sun while you can and stay safe. Have a good evening. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.